On the 21st of March in the year 1947, the U.S. Congress passed a law introducing presidential term limits. That was ratified four years later on the 27th of February, 1951. And that's why today American presidents must go for a, go for a maximum of two terms. That debate today finds itself in Kenya. Many people have been rattled by suggestion, the suggestion from the FAFI MP, who has told the country that together with other legislators from UDA on Kenya Kwanzaa, they intend to remove the two-term presidential term limits and instead introduce age limits. Hell has broken loose. I have reacted to this by saying that I see nothing wrong. Not with the removal of the term limits, but with the debate, with the conversation. Three, four days ago, I met a lady who stopped me at Ngong Market. This is usual, people stop, talk to me. Beyond the usual things that people will tell me about my contribution and so on and so forth. She asked me not to go there. The lady turned out to be a lecturer like me. Please don't go there, Manora. I asked her, go where? That issue of term limit. And a number of people have told me the same. I think I need to make myself clear about the issue of term limits. But before I do that, again, in response to many people in this country who feel security is getting out of control, and who seem to link this to what I said in a recent video about the executive seeming to target officers from the DCI and in fact their former boss, and of Raila seeming to attack the president for that. In a, in a, in a similar manner, many Kenyans say there's an increase in crime, especially violent crime. There are no facts on the ground yet, nothing on the table, but it would appear there is some truth in that. Equally, it would appear that there is truth in the fact that the police seem to be not necessarily going slow, but a little apprehensive. Now, this is my direct appeal to the police. Your president is a well-guarded man. The police, opposition chief, Chief Ray Laudinga, as you all know, my fellow Kenyans, especially the police, is a well-guarded man. I appeal to you, the police in this country, I'm making a direct appeal to you, the police officer listening to me. Please don't give up on your brothers and sisters. Don't give up on your fathers and mothers. Don't give up on your children. Please continue protecting your brothers and sisters from harm. The politicians are already well guarded. Don't allow anything to make you throw your hands in the air. It's my appeal to you. And I know I speak for many Kenyans when I ask the police, whatever perception they are, Whatever people say, whatever people may interpret, please do not allow politicians to push you into deserting your fellow brothers and sisters. Thank you very much. And now back to the term limits. When the Americans introduced the term limits, they had survived for about 132 years without any law limiting presidential term limits. It had become a tradition 
from the first president, George Washington. It is said he didn't seek a third term, not because he believed in limitations, but because perhaps he was too frail to continue. But Jefferson after him, Thomas Jefferson, was a strong proponent of the limitation of power. He spoke greatly in favor of limitation, that those who assume office should do so for a limited time. Again, this will be understood given the background. They were rebelling from a monarch, the English king, the English uh, monarch. But for 132 years, one or two people tried to force their way into a third term. Actually, three people. They didn't succeed. Until when Franklin D. Roosevelt did four good terms, and immediately after him, the Americans then came up with these term limits. I'm bringing in this history because it's important to know why people come up with certain legislations, why we have certain provisions in the constitutions of people within different jurisdictions. In Kenya here, we went through one party dictatorship. The de facto one party dictatorship of Jomo Kenyatta after what happened to Jaramogi Oginga Odinga with the KPU. Daniel Abmoy continued the one-party dictatorship, made it de jure by passing Section 2A that made it illegal to have another political party in Kenya. The struggle that has been called the Second Liberation, mainly by veteran politicians, Jaramogi Oginga Odinga, Kenneth Matiba, Charles Rubia, Martin Shikuku, and Young Tax, Raila Odinga, Gitobu Imanyara, Paul Muite, James Orengo. That struggle led to the introduction of multipartism. And in the elections of 1992, Kenya went not just for elections under multipartism, but the constitution then said, a president could only serve two terms. Moe, being the incumbent, was allowed to run another term. When in 1947, the American passed the limitations to two term limits, there was a provision in that amendment, the, the 22nd Amendment, there was a provision that exempted the incumbent, Harry Truman, Harry S. Truman, that the man who was in office was not going to be affected by the provisions limiting presidents in America to two terms. Just as Moy was exempted from the limitation so that nobody, for the avoidance of doubt, Nobody could have argued that Moy had served many years, many terms, and therefore couldn't go for another term. There was an exemption for the avoidance of doubt. The same worked in America. Why is this necessary? And why am I introducing it here? It is necessary so that when you introduce something, it does not negatively affect the person in office. But more importantly, that that person does not use it to his benefit, if he's the one introducing it. So that would therefore mean, if Kenyans were to pass an amendment to the constitution that in, removes the term limits, the debate would then follow naturally whether William Samoy Ruto will be a beneficiary of the same. To allay the fears that Ruto would want to be a dictator but now, to my thinking. But before I go to my thinking again, I just want to say I've received some overwhelming requests from people 
who want me to help them set up their YouTube channels. Especially young people brought to me by their parents. I still have space within my heart and within my establishment for anyone who still wants to be assisted to become a YouTuber and anybody who wants us to produce him to shoot the videos for him. Now to my thinking about the two term limits. I believe that Kenya introduced two term limits because we needed the two term limits to end the dictatorship. That without doing something as drastic as those provisions, I think in 1991, people like Moi would not have left power. Africa needed to find a way of removing life presidents. KK Kenneth Kaunda. One Zambia, one people. One people, one nation. One nation, one leader. That leader, KK forever. That is what Africa needed to remove. Hastings Kamuth Banda, frail, old, but hanging on to power. At that time, we needed something clearly written and spelled out and drastic like that. If you ask me, the provision for term limits is superfluous. It serves no purpose. Because the people must learn, and I'm very serious about this, the people must learn the meaning of leadership. The people of this country don't seem to appreciate the role of leadership. That no country can move forward without leadership. And that leadership must be good leadership. We will not encourage laziness in the manner in which we elect bumps on our roads. Instead of having discipline on our roads, where people drive and if they are found flouting regulations, including speed, you face the consequences. We are lazy enough, instead we elect bumps all over, destroying people's vehicles. Because of those bumps, your speed inter is interfered with. And anytime you get a to a clearance, you overspeed, again causing accidents. The laziness of introducing a two-term limit means we want to remove the responsibility of thinking from Kenyans or picking leaders. You pick a wrong governor because he comes from your clan. You Pick a useless MCA. And by the way, Kenya should realize their country develops from the world level. That wrong MCA you pick is responsible for your suffering. That useless man you send to parliament is responsible for your suffering. Don't even bother about the president. In fact, your MCA and your MP are more important to you than the president in terms of affecting your life. So term limit is a lazy way of doing things. Let's not elect, erect bombs on our roads. That is laziness. Kenyans must know without leadership, no country can develop. Even if you don't remove term limits, just how much damage can a bad president cause a country for five years, leave alone 10 years? Five years. You give a wrong man five years, he will mess your country in a way it could take 50 years to repair the damage. You put a wrong man in office, 10 years, that damage will take you 100 years to repair. So let's not talk about term limits. Let's take Kenyans to take charge of their country, especially young people who can't even take votes who can't even register to vote, and those registered can't even vote. Kenyans must know the destiny of this country is in their hands, and we shall not erect roadblocks for them, not roadblocks, bumps. We shall not build bumps. We shall ask them to use the road carefully, knowing very well there are sanctions. I hope people now understand my thinking about term limits. It's a lazy way. Kenyans must avoid the laziness. Every time you are called upon to register 
to become a voter. No, you are now dealing about the future of your child, the unborn child, the unborn grandchild. When you go to that booth to vote, remember you are voting about the future of your child, the future of your grandchild, the future of this country. That one vote will affect this country generations to come. And therefore, don't ask for term limits as a lazy way. Begin by looking at the people. In 2013, you were told, these guys were in the The whole world watched in disbelief. As we elected people facing international crime, the consequences are there. Look at where the economy is. Look at the mess Ruta and Uhuru has, have caused. You didn't listen. Huh? Yes. Next time in 2027, somebody from nowhere could come to challenge Ruto. And because you speak so well, building maybe on the suffering, maybe Ruto will not have sorted out the problems he set out to sort. But maybe he will be trying very hard. Maybe he will have learned that running government is not a joke. And it's just about to pick up. Then some demagogue will again come from somewhere. And, and you see, the guy from Singapore, Lee said it. If you choose demagogues, people with the gift of the gab, charlatans, the country will be gone. I hope now I've made myself absolutely clear. I do not support dictatorships. I do not support people staying in power forever. But neither do I support laziness. You must know when you go to elect your MCA, you are dealing with your future. Especially the middle class. They never vote. And they are busy making noise about these term limits. You vote in the right president next time you have an opportunity. And I'm sure the right president will not only change your country, but he will have nothing to do with term limits. He will do one, two terms and go home. Thank you for listening to me.